and welcome once again to our annual Christmas Eve special. You know, every year around this time, the entire staff gathers at the Eggnog Bowl and begins to sift through the nearly 250 stories we've done in the last 12 months. The goal is simple, to try to come up with the dozen or so stories least likely to make you want to switch over to the Food Channel. We think we've done it. We'll see. Our first segment is about people who collect stuff, and the key word here is obsession. The minute you walk in the Boring's front door, you know something ain't right. As you wander through the house, you become convinced of it. It's the decor. Most of the house is done in early stooge. The wall over the fireplace is filled with stooges, many of whom talk oh, right, and make those all too familiar sounds. <laughs> it is safe to say the Borings are big fans of the three stooges. Well, I grew up watching them in the 60s. But uh, my obsession started in the 80s, early 80s. So you, you do admit it's an obsession. It is an obsession, yes. <laughs> well, we're making progress here. <laughs> That's what my psychiatrist says. We are making progress. Just how obsessed is he? He was wearing these when we got married. <laughs> oh, man. We have it in a picture. No, I don't want to see the picture. <laughs> Thanks anyway. Actually, they had a Three Stooges wedding. Your Three Stooges wedding? Yes. Uh, let me guess. Do you, Mark, take Tina as your lawful wedded wife? Certainly! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you didn't. No, no, we didn't do that. But everything else was built around the Stooges, from the outfits to the Stooge-decorated <laughs> cake that was eaten off of Three Stooges' cake plate. Anybody throw the cake? No, oh, we didn't even smash in each other's face. We didn't even think about that, did we? <laughs> and you call yourself a Three Stooges fan. Okay. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Mo. Why? He's the boss. I like being the boss. <laughs> so what does that make you, Curly? Well, no. <laughs> I get off. <laughs> oh, and Mark plays the trumpet. <laughs> Here's Charlie Foote, hard at work at his hobby. Charlie collects golf balls. He got the idea watching his fellow Teleco Village golfers hitting balls into the lake. I'd go out every, almost every morning off of 14 and 15 uh, and dip balls out of the water, and I'd come home with 25 or 30 almost every morning during the summer. Which means you got a lot of bad golfers around yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Charlie kept finding golf balls, and then people started giving him golf balls, and one thing led to another, and all of a sudden, Charlie Foote is the proud owner of 13,000 golf balls. Much to my wife's uh, displeasure. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when he got started? I was so glad because we had just retired and he was out on his little boat getting golf balls out of the lake and it was wonderful. I loved it. And then? And then he took over one whole room downstairs. Well, the Foots have recently moved into a smaller townhouse, so Charlie's been ordered to pare down his collection. But where do you start? Each one is special. They're all alphabetized and categorized, and each one has a story. What's the story behind the gold one. Honestly, Ken, I think that came off an ashtray or something. <laughs> oh, come on. Never I, mind. I don't know. Well, here's one with the presidential seal. The president of the United States? How did you get that? I got 13,000 golf balls. You can't expect me to remember where oh, I don't well, know where. the president's for crying out loud. <laughs> but this one is Charlie's favorite. I wouldn't believe that anybody would make it had the Lord's Prayer on it. I, I wouldn't hit a golf ball with the Lord's <laughs> Prayer on <laughs> it. Our next subject is a girl who collects animals in her head, but every once in a while they get out. Okay, you're enjoying a nice meal at Louie's on Old Broadway when all of a sudden, well, Sonny Minot must be in the next booth. Sonny does animal impressions, has for most of her 18 years, and she takes requests. Dog. A dog? What size dog? No, <laughs> and he's a big dog. <laughs> Small dog. <laughs> Sonny's mom has worked here at Louie's for years, so Sonny kind of grew up here. It's like her home away from home. She even worked here for a time. And to this day, when she sees the cook frying bacon, she just can't resist. Here's two dogs fighting. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Some people
some people will see me and ask me to do that, while others, you know, don't do that, don't do that. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I can't. I can that, that would be your mother, huh? You don't know what it's like to live with a child that's constantly barking at your neighbor's dogs and having them bark at you. Medium dog. <laughs> or go to a store and you hear these tropical birds, and they don't have birds. That was embarrassing. <laughs> People who work here are certainly impressed with Sonny's ability. I think she's a little nuts. I think she's crazy. But she does a mean horse. <laughs> <laughs> there is a man who lives not far from our TV station on a typical city block, but whose yard looks, uh, well, a little on the countryside. For years, Mr. Goodman has been diligent about feeding the birds that live in his yard. The birds have come to depend on him. I have doves, I have cardinals, I have blue jays, I have sparrows. But lately, the bird seed has been disappearing before the birds could get their beaks on it. The culprits? Squirrels would come down the, that tree there, hop over onto that uh, clothesline post, and jump down and hit my bird feeder. They've been eating me out of house and home, I say. So in a stroke of genius, Mr. Goodman decided to set out corn to keep the squirrels happy and away from the bird seed. But the squirrels didn't eat the corn. They take it out and bury it. They the buried it? What yeah. happened? Yep, Mr. Goodman has become Farmer Goodman, and it's a banner year for corn. In fact, the corn is doing much better than the tomatoes that he's been trying to raise. And the old flower bed has never looked so good. We put, tried to put flowers in there, but they wouldn't grow so good. A squirrel just scratched a little bit of hole in the ground and dropped the <laughs> kernel in there, and it grew. So what do the neighbors think? They're kind of flabbergasted. They don't know what to think. I see people go by here and laugh, and I've seen see people stop and look, and what the world's going on to these people. But the most common response... I'd like to have some corn. <laughs> All this has made mowing difficult. Several plants have been mowed down, but they keep coming back. You ought to call City Hall and have them rezone it agricultural to lower your taxes. Come I on, you got know. a case there. Well, they might want me to move out then. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> when we come back, we will take a trip to a hardware store and get a little bit more than we bargained for. No offense to the folks at Home Depot, but there is just something about an old-timey country hardware store. Well, we found one in Andersonville, Tennessee. Since 1947, C.L. Sharp and Sons has been supplying folks in Andersonville with all their hardware needs, and groceries too. First C.L. himself in the original location, and now Son in the new location. And they pride themselves on the wide selection. Well, we got plumbing supplies, Electrical supplies. Razor blades? Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> Bank supplies. You want to try one. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> A third generation is already in training, and they're even impressed with their father's variety. He says a lot of things. He does. What's your favorite thing in here? Ice cream and candy. <laughs> yeah, somehow I figured that. <laughs> that explains the green finger. This is the culprit. You dip it in that stuff, and then, then you put it in your mouth, and then, then your finger turns green. Oh, cool. And your nose runs. Lots of times. The oddest thing about the place is in the back corner. Here you get some of the best Cajun food around. Today is jambalaya day, and it's incredible. It's all homemade, sausage and all, by this guy. I'm a Cajun from South Louisiana, yes. A real one? Yes, sir. Je parle en français aussi. I speak French. Oh, Cajun you speak French. French? Cajun French. Oh. I'm not from France, because no, right that's No, not, no, you don't want to be from that's France. That's not a good place. <laughs> now, sing me, just sing me a little bit of a song. Whatever song you want. Mm, rock and roll. Rock and roll? Yeah. You sing rock and roll? Yeah. Let me hear you. Rock and roll, yeah! <laughs> Sugar? What sugar? <laughs> well, we had so much fun at that hardware store, especially meeting that little kid that we did something we've never done before. We had so many great outtakes of the little boy 
that the next day we didn't want to waste them. We put them together in another story. Watch. In, your nose in case you missed it yesterday, this is J. Will Sharp. His daddy, Louis Sharp, runs the store where they sell hardware supplies and groceries and Cajun food and barbecue, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, J. Will loves the sweet stuff. He's especially fond of this sugar treat. You can tell by his finger and the rest of him, too. Jay Will is an inquisitive kid, asks a lot of off-the-wall questions out of the blue. How do you learn to whistle? How do you, oh, like... <whistles> Try it. Very good. Close. He's always on the move and polite, asking photographer Scott Liston permission to go to the little boy's room. Can I go to the bathroom? Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Keep practicing. Now, like all four-year-olds, J. Will has a dark side. Sometimes I throw a lot of stuff at people. Oh, you throw stuff at people? And not all the time. No. I only one time, only one time. Did you hit them? Nah. <laughs> I just miss them. But he did connect when he threw a little metal bolt that? that he had found. I threw it outside, that thing, and I threw it very hard. Then it turned it, then it hit Papa's... My dad's father's car is shattered. I see that. Did you get in trouble? No. I didn't do anything. Hey, you're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of kids, well, after we come back, we will. it seems that kids provide us with more laughs per person than any other demographic group. Here is living proof. When they say that Catholic schools offer a well-rounded education, they probably don't mean a bowling ball. But this is just one of the many ways kids and faculty at St. Mary's School here in Oak Ridge have chosen to celebrate the week. They're all decked out in blue and white, the school colors. But you can learn life lessons in a bowling alley, like what you lack in skills, you can make up for in enthusiasm. You can learn that mistakes happen. And the fact that if things don't go your way, if plans just aren't working out, and if the unbelievable occurs, someone's always willing to come to your rescue. But what about that discipline? Are the nuns as tough as they used to be? As mean as they used to be when I was a kid? Oh! <laughs> Does that mean no or yes? Why don't you ask the kids that question? Okay. Yeah. How mean are they? They're not mean. They don't, like, take rulers and whack you in the hands or anything. Well, they used to, believe you me. And I've got the scars to prove it. Have you ever been beaten by a nun? No. Heard stories though. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it is the moment of reckoning. Can Sister Bernadette bowl as well as she can teach? <laughs> well, here they come the kids from Adrian Burnett out on a field trip. Ever since they invented school buses, kids have looked forward to field trips. They take them to the neatest places. Well, okay, it's not Dollywood. Blame it on budget cutbacks or something, but these kids are taking a field trip to the dump. Uh, we take from households and businesses, anything you throw away at home, this is where it comes to. Uh, I really, really don't really like this. Why? It smells. Well, besides that. I know, it's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a place you'd rather be? Yes. Where? Mr. Gaddy's. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gaddy's? And I think it's fun. Do you? Mm -hmm. So I get down there and play in that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where the Lone Ranger takes his trash? 
No. Ta da dump, ta da dump, ta da dump, dump, dump. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? You're just smiling to be polite, aren't you? <laughs> nice dump. Well, actually, it's a landfill. Right. Right, right. <laughs> and the difference is? These are lined with uh, synthetic liners. They have leachate collection systems underneath them to collect uh, any leachate to prevent groundwater contamination. Oh. And in other words, it's a fancy dump. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Expensive fancy dump. Exactly right. And it wasn't long before the kids were used to the smell and playing happily in the dirt. Well, just one. Do you know where the Lone Ranger takes his trash? There you go. It's a landfill. Right, right, you got me. <laughs> this is Tim Stanfield, typical 13-year-old, a student here at Christian Academy of Knoxville. CAK Middle is getting ready to put on its own production of Annie. Rehearsals are now underway. Tim has been selected to play the role of Daddy Warbucks. Now the girl who plays the lead has only to don a curly red wig to become Annie. But the character of Daddy Warbucks presents a small challenge. He's bald. Yeah, he's bald. Mm -hmm. And the, guy, the kid that's playing him, is he uh, bald? No, not yet. <laughs> well, all that is about to change as Annie takes the scissors to Daddy Warbucks. Then a real barber, Ross the Boss Jr., takes over. <laughs> Within minutes, Tim Stanfield has become Daddy Warbucks. It all adds to the play, but you've got to wonder how his parents feel. What do you think? Well, I thought I might have a bald-headed son someday, but I thought I'd be a lot older. <laughs> so when does the play start? Tomorrow, tomorrow, the play starts tomorrow. It's only a day away. Uh, so it starts tomorrow? No, it starts Thursday. I just wanted to sing that. All right, <laughs> never mind. When we come back, we'll meet a man who travels with the wind at his back and a song in his heart. never did get his name, but one day we met a man on a lifelong journey. We're not sure of his destination, but he sure is enjoying the trip. You see people walking down roads wearing backpacks all the time, but most of them aren't carrying a guitar. So we just had to stop this gentleman and ask him a few questions. And we certainly got our money's worth. What kind of music do you play? Everything. Everything? Everything. Everything. Everything, my friend. I play. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to play? No, just, just I play el mole esta, la música esta por mí, and the señores esta, esta allá. Do what? It means love music. Ah. Are you a drifter? I'm what you call a floater. A floater. That's floater. different than a drifter, then. Yeah. I'm a master in kung fu. Oh, you Plus, are? I'm a high priest in the Egyptian priesthood. Who do you like? Who's your favorite uh, singer? ZZ Top. Oh, you like ZZ Top? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like yeah. the band that I like. You ever think about growing a beard like that? I uh, know I already done that. You get too much dirt in it. You know, there are some events around town that we attend every year, largely, no, strictly, because they're fun. Here are a few. They say you learn from your mistakes, so there is a lot of learning going on here. Better to have the dropsies here than on the football field in the fall. 
But out of all the mistakes come flashes of brilliance. Judy Cox started the camp as a UT majorette 39 years ago and has seen a lot of changes. Uh, it's gotten a lot harder. They are doing a lot more difficulty. There's a lot of uh, gymnastics. I don't think I could make it again. No. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I tore my fake nail off and it like ripped the rest you of my nail off. your fake nail off? Yeah. It's <laughs> awful for a majorette. I know. Did it hurt? Yes, it hurt really bad. What did you say? I was like, ow. The fun part about twirling is you get to meet new friends and you learn new tricks. Oh, you learn new tricks? Mm -hmm. You got any new tricks you can teach this old dog? Yeah. And talk about family traditions, Mamaw was a UT majorette in the 50s, mom in the 80s, and daughter, well, someday. You want to be a UT majorette too? Yeah. Right after she overcomes a slight shyness problem. The selection is almost overwhelming. For those of us who get to eat this stuff once a year, the process of deciding what to get is agonizing. So we seek the advice of an expert. So you just arrived from Israel. Mm -hmm. so, so you eat this stuff all the time? Not all the time. Just in holidays. Oh, oh really? So what do you eat the rest of the time? Like hot dogs and hamburgers? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah? No. <laughs> the secret to eating Jewish food is simple. Enjoy it. Let it nourish your soul. And, of course, music plays a big role. What's the hardest Jewish food to pronounce? Kichel. <laughs> I didn't say the funniest, I said the hardest. Uh, what is it? Kichel. 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 Please, please. <laughs> this is the well-known matzah ball soup. It's Jewish penicillin, and it's very good for whatever else you Does it work? Certainly. Oh, all right, all right, all right. The ladies of the Red Hat Society were here today, providing inspiration to some Jewish men. I'm what? trying to start a men's group at our synagogue, Heskimona. Yeah? The Red Yarmulke Society. <laughs> Eating a Jewish sandwich can be a challenge, the reason being there's so much meat. The pastrami on rye is just loaded with pastrami. And here's the Jewish philosophy behind it. When you make a pastrami sandwich, pile the coconuts high. So when a customer sees the pastrami coming through the rye, nailed it! <laughs> The floor of the Jacobs Building is a happening place this week with booth after booth, selling stuff, promoting stuff. Now we're going to do some comparative cooking. The kids love the bee exhibits. But the youngsters really love this sign. Kind of like those irritating crawls you see on the news. But the kids were mesmerized. One booth was selling funny hats, you know, the kind you buy at a fair, and when you get home, you wonder why. Yeah, you look like a Viking. I'm a Viking, but I'm a uh, Redskin fan. I gotta be Viking. <laughs> all right, forget it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Vendors here go all out on their booths for several reasons. Oh, what is that? That is a blue ribbon. We're the best in the You get in a the... blue ribbon? We do. Like Our... the cows and the chickens, you oh, get a blue ribbon? We do. They included us. Well, now, what's the name of this place? Home and Garden Party. Oh, garden party. Yeah. Oh, by Ricky Nelson. I remember. How'd that go? Went to a home and garden party. <laughs> All my friends were there. Uh, <laughs> sound like a cheap commercial to me. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> now, what do they sell here? Blue stuff. Blue what? Just called blue stuff. It's pretty generic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But have you tried blue stuff? No, not really. You know what it is? No, what is it's it? Stuff. It's stuff. What does it do? Well, it's blue stuff. Well, I know blue stuff, but what does blue stuff do? Well, we don't know. 
But where, where do you put it? We don't know that either. It's just stuff. Well, you want to buy some or not, lady? No, I'm not going to buy any. If I don't know what to do with it. You spray it on. On your body? Well, I don't didn't say. A car? Well, but both. The It'll take the rust off. Oh, does it? Well. No, nah, the car, not oh, your I body. Not, I was going to say. I don't. <laughs> Well, that's our show. As usual, we thank you for watching, and from the entire staff, Merry Christmas.